Second part of our Strasbourg showcase, um, we're going to feature an interview with a, a chap well known to, to quite a few of you who's visiting here. Um, it's one of two times he's been here, but he's not completely familiar with what's going on. Uh, Ian Kitchen, um, one of our chaps from Yorkshire, together with me, Nick Griffin, we're going to take part in a little discussion on what Ian you perceive to be uh, the role of our research team in here, what you make of it all and whatever. You've been here twice now. What do you think? Absolutely mind-bendingly, boggingly, if you have no comprehension of what happens here, my words couldn't describe it. Mm. First of all, the biggest shock I have is the hours that you people work. It's just absolutely unbelievable. Nice we, no, no, <laughs> we, we all laugh and joke and everybody thinks that this is a roller coaster ride. I can assure everybody at home the amount of hours you make me work is absolutely mm. insane. Uh, yourself, Andrew Moffat, the, uh, I mean, you said I've been listening to the last two or three occasions I've been here, and at the end of the day, you, you go through every motion, mm. so word by word, phonetically almost, mm. and you discuss everything as it goes on, and eventually you, you look at it and say, yes, no, abstain, and I, I just could not believe how intense. Mm. And if you come across one word that's wrong, you suddenly it off and you research it. Mm. I, I, but you spend 10 hours a day to the point where I'm fetching your drink to keep you going and mm. you don't stop for lunch. No. And I don't know how you eat. It's a, the, the man's a slave driver. Mr. Griffin is a slave driver. There, there's the evidence for that. But there's an old saying in Yorkshire, if a job's worth doing, it's, it's worth, worth doing, doing properly. Yeah. So um, that's, that's the way we do it. As far as I, I see it, Nick, you were elected Andrew Bronze was elected, and we're going to do a good job here, aren't we? We're doing a good job. Yeah. Yep. Um, that's the way. Other people take the point of view that they just treat this place with... Um, they, they shy away well, from the proper... Ian mentioned proper to me that he'd, he'd seen that, because yeah. one of the things that um, uh, you can do here as a, as a visitor, or even for that matter as the researchers, once the votes are done, once the mm -hmm. votes are decided, is to go and look up the thing. So I know that Ian has sat up uh, in the... Uh, in the stalls, cool. as it were, watching. What's your impression and sort of what's the comparison between how we work and how others work? I, two things I have to say that I was absolutely fascinated. I, I don't know if it's a privilege or what, but the other day I was sat and saw a tide vote. Mm. And it was 3.11 each. And for the first time, it actually convinced me the amount of power we have mm. as the British National Party in the European Parliament. Mm. Because it was tied vote. In other words, if Nick hadn't have voted, that would have won all of us. One man. Mm. We have that one man. Yeah, yeah. And it did and, go through, actually. And it, and it actually yeah. went through. And then we had another vote that was won by one vote. Mm. The one. And people say, well, what can the British National Party do mm. in the European against all the rest of them? Mm. But to actually see the voting figures and how things are, it's a democratic European economy. Mm. I don't agree with it. The party doesn't agree. We shouldn't be here. Mm. But at least we have voice in our opinion. Mm. And the advantage I have of coming here is actually seeing the difference. A lot of amendments go through with huge swings either side. Mm. But there are a few things that go through with that much. Yeah. And then we can say, yes, all the work mm. we did, all the work we did posting, all the work we did out there doing the canvassing, all the work we did to get our MEPs in, mm. actually does something. Yeah, we the public can actually really see what we mm. is to only look at the voting figures mm. and the second part the, if you see how other people work well uh, Mr Farage of, of UKIP is absolutely unbelievable he ought to get a job on a comedy show I've never I always thought what he did was put on for a few seconds mm. but when you watch him I mean the thing I've noticed is the voting is very quick as you know it's up and down and up and down mm. and then they mechanical. have mechanical yeah. it's, it's very mechanical mm. and what people look at they have a physical vote and then they have an electronic vote on the electronic votes, Mr. Farage votes, you can see his hand going in his little hole and he presses because that's recorded. Mm. But on the physical votes, he just sits there. Mm. Can't be bothered. Mm. So why is he... Well, we, we, saw, we saw that today where what we feel were important subjects, um, some of them involving the indoctrination of children. That's right. There so were many, many UKIP people that simply weren't in the, the chamber. Out, They're gone. Gone. Yeah. Absolutely gone. Quite astonishing. Yeah, you see that probably, don't you? You see that if you're out there looking and checking how 
different groups are voting because mm. we watch the um, the Scottish Nationalists and the, and the uh, and the Cymru yeah, uh, voting, vote, yeah, okay. and yeah, they vote in ways that uh, if their voters actually knew how they're voting, mm. they would not be so pleased. Mm. So you mm. actually see that. I think you're in a better position sometimes to see who's walked okay. out. But time and time again, UKIP actually walk out before the votes are finished. Mm. They come in because if you're not there, you don't get paid. But uh, especially the moment the roll call votes, the electronic votes are finished, they're off like greyhounds out of a trap. And, <laughs> and it doesn't matter what extra piece of nasty little EU legislation mm. goes through on the nod, they're already off for lunch or home well, on the plane. That, yeah, that's, um, that's surprising, isn't it? it that's is, surprising. Yeah. But turn to another subject. I mean, the thing that's dominated the British media um, for a couple of weeks now is this grooming scandal. And we've been working the last couple of days on a written declaration. Ian, this summit, you're a northerner, obviously, as people can tell, you're from Yorkshire. This Times report highlighted the plague on northern towns. Their words. The plague on northern towns. And whilst we're working on this, as a written declaration that we're going to put in front of all um, MEPs here, and we've already had indication that this will not go um, ignored. People will support what we're going to do. Can you tell me how that affects you. How that affects you as a, 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 a proud Englishman, uh, a proud Northerner, a proud Yorkshireman to know that that kind of business is going on and not only that, that the people you're paying your council tax to, the police and the social services are turning a blind eye while that's happening. I'm absolutely disgusted. The, the worst thing about it, I don't know if we actually discussed it, you might not know, I actually reported the case of grooming to the police five weeks ago it's on record mm. basically it was a local taxi firm yeah. and they and my house is a, a last piece of land in front and the taxi stopped the girls mm. got out and the taxi drove off and came mm. back and picked these girls back up and when I reported it to the police the first thing I told the police was so before you go any further mm. I'm in the British National Party mm. and I don't want really to think this is a racist mm. thing that I'm reporting and I reported it to the police and they took a few notes and went Th the most annoying thing is the Times, I mean, Nick Griffin mentioned this years and years ago, went to court and nearly got arrested for it. Nearly got jailed. Nearly got jailed for it, <laughs> yes. But, uh, and at the end of the day, still our councillors don't do anything about it, still our MPs don't know do about it. Mm. They're getting hit in the face from all angles, mm. but they don't seem to feel the pain that we, the public, feel. Mm. They don't see the problems of our children, they don't see what's happening at the schools, they don't mm. see what, how Muslimification of Great Britain works. They don't mm. read the Quran and the, they mm. don't read what it says because what people have got to understand is these people are allowed to treat our girls like that mm. in their mind, in their religion. Because mm. their religion states that obviously if you're not of their faith, you are nothing. Mm. So they can do it to our people. Mm. Their own people don't decry it. Mm. And our, our own authorities are so down liberal mm. that they think, oh well, we've got to. Uh, nothing is working, but no matter how hard we convince them this is happening, it's not being done. No. The annoying thing is the voting public mm. aren't going out there to vote for somebody that will put it right. Not necessarily us. Well, this is why I asked you, because people can tell you very passionate about the, 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 the circumstances, the, 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 the subject. You're a very practical chap, you, you can tell that, a very practical, down-to-earth guy. Our problem, or our task, is to take your opinions, your quite legitimate horror at this subject, bring it to this European Parliament, like we're doing with this written declaration, and to make it an issue here. So we can see that the, the declaration we've got actually asks for those um, civil servants, those police officers, to actually be brought to account for aiding and abetting. That's an important thing, isn't it, Nick? I think it is, uh, and uh, I would safely predict that we will get support for this written declaration mm. from MEPs from various countries, uh, including, I've had an indication from a, um, an Italian Christian Democrat, mm -hmm. she'll support it as well. She won't be the only one at all. We'll get no. support from across the board, mm. except from British MEPs, mm. who will not even respond to it, will not do something. Mm. And you're right to, to an extent. Our task is to bring these kind of things here. Mm. But more than that, our task is then to use the fact that they've been brought exactly. here 
mm. and bring it back home to put it into real politics. Yeah. And I want to bring it home and then with various Labour MPs uh, who say, oh, we're talking about this issue, then we want to hit them and say, well, how come not one of your MEPs from Yorkshire or Lancashire or uh, the Midlands or West Midlands or whatever, not one of them would sign this motion. Mm. Uh, you know, we, can, we need to use that and we mm. need to uh, embarrass them and shame them into doing something or if in the end they won't, then we use, use, need to use, and we will use the fact that they won't, to push to the British public the fact that if they want this issue addressed, mm. then since the old elite won't deal with it, they've got to get rid of the old elite. It's not some, going to be something, obviously, that happens overnight. Mm. You know, this was an issue in the Oldham by-election, uh, and our vote went down marginally, mm. was squeezed down. You know, one would hope that with this going on and acknowledged it was happening in Oldham, mm. you'd have hoped that people would have said, right, well, you know, now... But I can tell you, and Ian was there as well, as were you on that mm -hmm. campaign trail, mm -hmm. that the sympathy for us out there is enormous. It's just we've got to actually connect and turn mm -hmm. that sympathy into you know, solid, passionate commitment. The way people used, in places like um, Yorkshire and so on, used to have a passionate commitment to the Labour Party. We've got to create that passionate commitment, mm -hmm. and we can only do it. The reason people have a passionate commitment, still some of the old folk, in places like Wakefield and Barnsley and so on, mm. to the Labour Party, is that for several generations, mm. the Labour Party really did things which mm. made a difference for the better for those people's lives. Mm. And that's what we've actually got to do. And on the grooming issue over this summer, we're not just bringing it here. Mm. I'm determined more than that, and a lot of the work that I do here is more about organising the campaign. Mm. And I'll tell you, we're going to have one hell of a campaign on this issue. Uh, this year, which is going to be the making of the British National Party in some areas mm. uh, and the breaking of the opposition in people's eyes mm. uh, because it's such an important issue mm. and the campaign that we're working on is going to be really exciting and more important than that, it's a really just good campaign. Gentlemen, we could talk forever but we've got another section of this uh, special Strasbourg mid-January programme to come along, so Ian, Nick, thank you very much. Thank you.